on season pass. High school baseball and softball are in action. A look from around the Concho Valley just ahead. It was also a busy week on the soccer pitch. Highlights from old Bobcat Stadium coming up. The Rams and Ram Bells also continued play. A weekly wrap-up of Angelo State Sports coming up as well. The NBA was in action. Stay tuned for sights and sounds from across the association. All this and more coming up on season pass. KLST Studios, this is your KLST Season Pass. Hey, what is up, Concha Valley? It's been a while since I've been on this set. Welcome to Season Pass, your all-access pass, and your only sports show here in the Concho Valley. I'm your host, Matt Locke, filling in for Ryan Reynolds tonight, and we have a loaded program tonight with action coming from high school and college levels, and hey, why not even some professional baseball and softball as well? We've got gymnastics, San Angelo Realize, highlights from the soccer pitch, so we're just going to get right into it as March Madness begins on the hardwood. Madness on the diamond continues. We have two games in the Concho Valley. We're started off here in town as the Central Bobcats take on District rival Euless Trinity on Tuesday. Pick it up in the first inning with no score. Trojans with a runner on third. Jimmy Crooks with a soft grounder down the first baseline. Central can't make a play on it. The runner will score. Euless goes up 1-0. Bottom of the frame now. Runner on second for the Cats as Nixon Brandon lines one to center. It's caught, but it's deep enough to move Rance Rosas to third. The very next batter, Gunner Couch, coming off a no-hitter earlier in the season. Grounds out to third. However, that sacrifice is enough, or excuse me, that'll bring an inning to a close without Central bringing in the run. Central falls 2-1. to one. Over to the softball diamond now with the Wall Lady Hawks taking on Ballinger Tuesday afternoon. We'll pick it up in the second inning. Wall leads 1-0, but not for long as a base is loaded for Ballinger. They hit, it, hit into a fielder's choice. She's out at first, but the, ball, or the runner comes around to score. We're tied at 1. The Lady Cats would continue to pour it on. Still second inning. Ballinger rips it to center. That scores the run from third, and the Lady Cats take a 2-1 lead. Later in the inning, Ballinger is going to shoot it over to second. The fielder misplays it. That'll score two more runs in the inning. They would extend their lead 4-1, to one, but Wall comes back to defend their home field and get the win, 6-5. to five. This weekend was the district championships for the Central Gymnastics team, a team with a lot of history and a lot of success to live up to. San Angelo was the host for the meet. The Lady Cats won the team title with a score of 230.75, beating out second place Permian. The Lady Cats swept the first four positions in the overall standings. Savannah Razzani got the win with a score of 77 even, followed by Madison Vogel, Mary Grace Thompson, and Hallie Smith coming in second, third, and fourth, respectively. The Bobcats finished in second behind Permian with a score of 322.8. Emiliano Hinojos was the highest finisher for Central, coming in fifth with a score of 103.7. Cody Cox, Mariano Deller, and Wayne Hines all finish in the top 15 as well. The 61st running of the San Angelo Relays took place this weekend at San Angelo Stadium. 86 schools coming out to compete and a lot of records falling. 38-year-old long jump record held by Central alum Van Percy was broken by Colin Price of Colleen. He now has the second best jump in the state of Texas and the country. Some other highlights include Sonora Boys claiming second in the 4 by one Walls Drake Holyfield, who had a broken hand to start the season, set a new record in the 110 hurdles. The Wall Lady Hawks won the 4 by 400 with Sonora claiming second. So congratulations to all the athletes who competed this weekend. March Madness may have most of the country's attention, but the Central Lady Cats soccer team had a massive game this week themselves. They claimed their fourth straight 3-6A three dis, uh, three district championship, and they look to end the regular season on a high note on Friday. So Central taking on Euless Trinity to end the regular season. This was a tough game all around. Both teams scoreless in the first half, but that changed in the second. 29 minutes remaining, and Avery Handy is going to find senior Addison Bonaventure, who drills it into the back of the net. That'll put it, make it 1-0. Senior day. Speaking of seniors, Megan White has been locking down opposition's attack all season. The Faulkner commit has allowed one district goal, and she showed why being a wall in front of that net. Euless Trinity had chances to score but could not capitalize. And the three 6A district champion Lady Cats end the season on a high note with a 1-0 win and will now face Fort Worth Pascal in the bi-district playoff round on March 29th in Abilene. Here's head coach Ben Henry on what made the team successful this season. They just get along. I mean, it's been a great year all around. My seniors are fantastic. Underclassmen are fantastic. They take care of each other. It's just been a lot of fun. There hadn't been a lot of stress involved with it. Not a lot of drama with these girls. And uh, so it's, it's been very easy to transfer that to practices and to competitions because they just fight for each other and they love each other. I think it's our history because we have, a, we have a great senior group and we've all played together since we were little bitty. And a lot of the younger ones too, we've all played on the same like, club team and played together for these four years, so it's, uh, we have a lot of team history, so we all know each other and we play well together. 
Just like the Lady Cats, both Lakeview soccer teams have been almost untouchable in district play this season, with both the Chiefs and the Maidens claiming the district championship. Starting with the Chiefs, the Lakeview boys secured the 4-4A district title last week, their first district championship since 2014. They then shut out the Azteco Matadors Tuesday's regular season finale with a 2-0 win, improving to 6-8 overall and 5-1 in district play. The Chiefs will take on their five-game winning streak into the playoffs next week with a match against Borger. That game will be on March 28th at 7 p.m. To end on a high note and to be able to hold the, that go ball was something special, especially with these guys. A lot of them have been with me for two years now. They put in the work. We were 2-18 and 18 last year, and now we're in the playoffs in first place, so it couldn't have been, couldn't have been a better feeling. Uh, it, it feels great. We know there's a target on our back, and we know that other teams are looking to, to, to take us down. Yeah, they're, they're a good team. Uh, we know that they're big, they're physical, and uh, we know that they're going to give us a challenge if the ball's in the air. So it's important for us to possess it, knock it around, uh, and play wide, as wide as we can, and, and finish our chances, because we know they're going to come out and come out strong, especially being district champs. The Lakeview girls is also having fun on the pitch. The Maidens claimed their first 4-4A district title in 11 years and finished with a perfect record in district play with a 4-1 win over Lubbock on Tuesday. The Maidens finished 11-6-2 overall with a 6-0 record in district competition. The Maidens will also face Borger in their playoff opener this week on Thursday. This one's slated for 7 p.m. at Lubbock Cooper, and head coach Henry Gonzalez says his team's experience will play a huge factor. They're veteran players. These girls have... I have 11 seniors. They've been on this team. Uh, some of them, JV, moved up to varsity, but they know each other. They know each other's movements. They know where they're going to be when the game starts. They know when there's a corner. Whenever we have a set play, they know where they're going to be. Uh, so when they're out there, they're actually, they understand where, where, where the role they're going to play in, in uh, you know, in winning. So a lot going on in the Concho Valley, mainly on the Diamonds. Coming up in season pass, we'll take a look at the next level and the week that was for the Angelo State Rams and Bells. Stay with us. The rule of three states, things that come in threes are inherently more appealing. We couldn't agree more. Three trucks, one GMC. Get over 9,000 total value on this specially equipped Sierra Denali. Plus, get an additional 1,000 purchase allowance when you finance through GM Financial. Plus, current GM owners get an additional 1,000 purchase allowance, and Texas residents get an additional 1,000. Back by popular demand, it's the Super 7-Day Sell-Off at Furniture Row. Shop today and save big store-wide because it's all on sale. All living, all dining, and all bedroom. Find savings on the entire Denver mattress brand luxury lineup. Plus, make your money go further with our five years no interest financing. That's no interest until March of 2024. But don't miss out. The Super 7-Day Sell-Off at Furniture Row ends Thursday the 28th. Hi, I'm Darren Black with my son Chris Black and my grandkids Maverick and Presley. I'd like to say thank you for allowing Black Plumbing to be a part of your family for the past 25 years. And we look forward to serving you for the next 25 years. Or in the next 50 years. On behalf of the best employees in Texas, we'd like to thank you for making Black Plumbing your professional choice for the past 25 years. The pros who know are ready to go. Call on Black Plumbing. Help is on the way. Thank you. Three new Nissans, two powerful Titans, one award-winning lineup. Save big on all of it at Nissan Now. No brand received more J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards for cars and trucks than Nissan. Save big on Rogue with Safety Shield 360. Hurry in and experience why more people are loving Nissan now. For a limited time, save the $3,000 or get a low $239 per month lease on the 2019 Rogue. Get to Nissan Now. Welcome back to Season Pass. Filling in for Ryan Reynolds, I'm Matt Locke. History repeats itself. German philosopher Karl Marx is credited with that saying, but for the most part, it stands true. In 2016, the Angelo State Bells basketball season went ended at the hands of Lubbock Christian. In 2018, the Bells also fell to the Lady Chaps in the postseason. In 2019, yeah, you guessed it. The Bells magical season was cut short courtesy of Lubbock Christian in the Sweet 16 on Tuesday. 
Well, the showdown between the Bells and the Lady Chops wasn't a doozy. The Bells fell 76 to 70 in the team's and the only team's second Sweet 16 appearance in school history. Marquita Daniels led the way with 27 points and five steals, while Dee Moore added that stat sheet with 16 points and nine rebounds. Here's head coach Renee Shippey with her thoughts after the heartbreaker. Our senior leadership is unreal. Um, you know, these these girls they they played here last year and uh, they were not intimidated. Uh, and LCU obviously is an incredibly well coached and incredibly great team, very, very talented. Um, but again, our girls, they haven't been intimidated. I was incredibly proud. You know, first quarter, they, they went on an incredible run against us. You know, energy from their home crowd, uh, comfortable with where they're playing. Um, and our kids fought back, and we ended up winning in the second half. And that was an incredible feat. The Bells softball team find themselves back to winning ways after a 10-game skid earlier this season. They're at UTPB for a weekend series of their own. The Bells won the first game of the doubleheader this weekend and led 2-1 to one, the sixth of the, or going into the second. Victoria Vasquez gets the strikeout with one on, and then Kayla Martin will ground to short as the Bells easily turn the double play. So we'll play there as we catch back up to the highlights. There's one. And over to two, great execution by the Bells to end the inning. Defensive battle midway through the game. UTPB's Sloan Springfield gets the strikeout, gets into the strikeout action on the top of the seventh. Neither team scored for three innings until UPPB tapped on one in the seventh to take it to extras, where the Rams scored twice but could not hold on as they fell to the Lady Falcons 6 to 5. Now to the series finale this afternoon. ASU had an early 1-0 lead in Game 3. Falcons with one on in the first, where Abby Hernandez bunts it. She will be out at first, but the sacrifice does the trick as the runner advances. Next up, Jessica Gonzalez cranks one out to left field corner. That will score her a double and send her teammate home. We're tied up at one. And later on, Kayla Martin trying to keep it rolling. Megan Gordon, however, is going to be there to save the day. She makes the catch and guns down Gonzalez at third. And the Bells get out of the inning with that double play. And they would shut down any momentum for the Lady Falcons as ASU gets the win, 11-5. The Rams beginning a weekend series with UTPB on, a, on Friday. A beautiful night for baseball. The warm weather here in the Concho Valley starting to set in. The Rams taking on the Falcons, going for win number 20 on the season. Bottom of the first, no score. Leadoff hitter Michael Urquidy, scoreless no more. Solo home run to left. That's his first of the season. Over the wall out there, that'll make it one nothing Rams. And then to the top of the second, Rams still with a one nothing lead. Falcons trying to respond. Tony Oslovar hits a double to center field. However, the Falcons would be unable to bring him home to score, so it's still one nothing. Bottom of the second, now we go. Rams beginning to break it open with Josh Elvere. What a bat he's had all season. He's going to drill a three run home run. About the same spot as Urquidy hit his. That'll make it 4 0 Rams. They would put up six in that, old, in that inning. Rams win game one, 16 5 and 7. Which brings us to Saturday's doubleheader. Back to Foster Field for game one. Top of the second, 3 0 Falcons. Shannon Broussard comes in for Trent Baker with the bases loaded. First battery faces, strikes him out looking. Next batter, Premron Burrow, bounces it back to Broussard, who throws it to the catcher, Nick Saginowich, for the out, and then throw to first for the double play. So to the bottom of the second we go, two on for Josh Elvier. He singles to right, and that'll bring home two runs. That'll make it three to two, the Falcons lead. But the Rams would come back to win it and defend Foster Field and win game two, five to three. Rams and Falcons game two now, bottom of the second. No score, runner on third, where an errant throw by Alex Rivera allows Jackson Hardy to steal second. Josh Elvier comes in to score. It's two nothing Rams. Later in the inning, Hardy still on second. Parker Bramlett grounds out to second. Hardy's going to try to come home on it, but we have a close play at the plate. Call on the field is out. Kevin Brooks came out to challenge. It would be reviewed after further review. Out is the call. It's still 2 0 Rams. Top of the third, Fabian Muniz strikes out the side to get out of danger with run runners on the corner. Gets Tony Oslovar and then Tyler Fraley and then Skyler Palmero. It is still 2 0 Rams. They would hang on to get the win as well. Big win for them, 11 to nothing. They sweep all four games against UTPB. Spring football has officially begun for Angelo State in the new regime under head coach Jeff Gersh. Talking with Coach Gersh throughout the offseason, he's got a lot to be excited about for this upcoming year. The Rams look to build off a 6 and 6 season last year, ending in a loss to Central Oklahoma and the heart of Texas Bowl. We talked to the team about hitting the field after a crazy offseason. 
Yeah, it, it's great. It's great to get the guys back out. They've had a long offseason, uh, a very challenging offseason. We did some things differently in the weight room and differently uh, during that offseason process to get them ready to go. You know, um, I'm just proud of them. They worked really hard. You know, the staff did an unbelievable job getting these guys, you know, prepared for this. But this is kind of a celebration of the end of the uh, winter workouts and the end of the spring and, and getting back in the field. So we're excited. Up next on